Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on The Flash. Today we're going to be going over a new interview by The Flash podcast by my friend Andy. So shout out to him for conducting this interview with Eric Wallace. It's a really great interview. I'm going to leave the links in the description below so you guys can go ahead and check out the article which we're going to be talking about in this video. And this is with showrunner Eric Wallace of The Flash. So, yeah, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. So this interview is in fact mainly about episode 15 which aired last week. However, a lot of the questions actually were talking about future episodes and basically what's going to happen next post episode 15. So we're going to be going through quite a lot of the questions. And there is one main question that I want to talk about because Andy actually asked Eric Wallace about Supergirl and the cameo that was teased in his previous interview with Eric. And Eric Wallace gives an update on that. So the first question we're going to be this. I want to get a little more into specifics with this episode because a lot happens. I know you said that this is an interlude episode but it also seems to serve as a kind of kickstart to the next graphic novel. I'm guessing Iris's time sickness will play a huge factor in the, in the latest graphic novel whenever the current interlude ends. Is it fair to say that episode 15 serves both as an interlude but also really a start to the next arc? Eric Wallace replies this, yeah so much so that even I didn't realise that until about a week out from going into production, we were on set working with certain scenes with the actors and whatnot and seeing the performances come to life and seeing the words come to life this is not an exaggeration it's strange but it's not an exaggeration there are so many clues hints and i would dare say spoilers flat out in this episode that is part of the remainder for season eight and even set up for season nine i didn't almost realize it until i watched the final cut i watched it last week with all the effects and everything and so he goes on to say i thought if you put 1, 2, and 3 together, you can really figure out where we're going, which is very exciting because there are some clues and hints. We tried to be a little cryptic because I do like Lost. It's a great show, you're absolutely right. Even though it's an interlude episode and it is kind of standalone, it's very much so about the search for Iris inside the Steel Force. It's right there in the title. When we get to graphic novel 7, there is a moment from the season finale, and I'm not trying to say too many spoilers, that I just finished watching, which wraps up everything that set up right out of episode 15, which is strange. I thought, wait a minute, did I spoil too much in episode 15? Are we telling too much? But then folks haven't read the scripts yet, so I'm not too worried. Hopefully it'll be like a wonderful kind of coincidence for the folks watching at home, but there is a plan in place. That's the long-winded answer. So there you go. That is Eric Wallace replying to a great question from Andy. And so basically what he discusses here is, yes, the stuff that happens in episode 15 basically teases what's to come later in the season. And I would say maybe this links into the Max Mercury side of things, but also links into Iris. And also you have Nora who returned in the episode. So there is a lot that can be said about this, but I would say mainly Max Mercury. Although there is a question in a bit that we will discuss because there is a question about Max Mercury in just like one or two questions. So this is the next question. I know Candace has said we won't see Iris for four episodes. I know that you can't say too much about season nine, but I know that a lot of fans have been wondering about the status of Iris with contract renewers still pending and whatnot. But can you share what led to Iris being absent in this part of the season was that conversation with Candace or was that something the story demanded. So Eric says, I don't want to speak for Candace obviously, it's a little bit of both. The story kind of demands if someone's lost in time that they need to disappear, Eric laughs at this point. I guess we saw a little bit of it but it was only gone for 5 minutes in between episodes 11 and 12 but for a character for us as an audience to really understand her time sickness how dangerous it is. And what it really means and what we're setting up for our season we've really tried to up the ante and really explore that story the first part of the story is she's really gone and we really can't find her so yeah she's going to be missing for like four episodes apparently what we are going to try and do and not just find her but bring her back and cure it all once and for all i think i've said this to folks before but rest assured i can tell everyone right now and this is not a spoiler yes iris's time sickness will be cured she'll be back 
who will be resolved by the end of season 8. These last 6 episodes were digging into all of that stuff. Okay, so this is very curious. Well, Eric actually confirms that there's 6 more episodes. So right now we're on episode 15, which just aired last week. And he says there is six more, so that means, in fact, there's going to be 21 episodes in this season. Now, that wasn't previously confirmed before, because remember, the last couple of seasons has been a bit shorter, it's been less than 20 episodes. So, the fact that Eric is saying we have six more episodes is a big deal. It's huge. Like, how comes they agreed to do that many more episodes? I'm very curious. But it's very exciting because we still have a big chunk of the story left this season. In terms of Iris, obviously she's going to be gone for four episodes or at least the large portion of those episodes. But she will be back and yes, her time sickness is going to be cured. However, it isn't something that's going to happen straight away. And they're really going to dig into the fact that she's really missing and we won't see her for a while. And this is, like Eric says, part in part like, you know, discussion that they had behind the scenes to give Candace some time off but also a story factor that needed her to go off I don't know if four episodes is too long like is that stretching it too much for a main character to be gone and disappeared however you know that's just the way that they went with that so we have to kind of deal with that okay so let's go on to the next big question so this comes from the flash podcast once again that's fair so going back to the episode, I'm a huge nerd like yourself, and looking at the easter eggs in this episode, it was hilarious for me. I don't know whether or not I want to see Godspeed and Zoom team up now, or if it's a certain Max you mentioned. I spoke with Mark Wade last year, and he said that he'd hope one day to see a Max Mercury reference, so I think he's going to be happy watching this episode. What can you speak about those easter eggs? Because we know that most in the Arrowverse, you guys don't just name drop these things and just move on. There's always a purpose of teasing said characters. What can you say about potential futures of the characters you're teasing here? Eric Wallace laughs. He says, wow, like I said, I think I've perhaps revealed too much about the season finale and about season nine with all these spoilers, but you're right, Andy. Nothing is there by chance. Nothing is a coincidence, as everybody also knows. I've said this many times. Zoom is my favorite villain. I'm determined to get him back on the show somehow. I would say that there is a doorway that you will see in episode 15, which we see with the newspaper article and Godspeed. That's the doorway. I won't tell you when it's happening or where it's going or any of those things. I will also say to you, because that was still Force, which is past, present and future all mixed together, your eyes can deceive you at times, so what you exactly see might not be exactly what's coming out, but a variation of it. Who knows? Who knows? As for the other obvious it's not even subtle my goodness name drop that we have in the episode there's a reason for that so keep watching so there you go you have eric wallace talking about the fact that the name drop of max mercury the fact that it's not subtle at all that's there for a reason and something's going to be coming with that so that is pretty much him just teasing max mercury like flat out so in the past we've had lots of references to different characters like red death and, you know, other various references that haven't come to fruition. However, it's pretty certain by the way that Eric talks about it that Max Mercury is going to be coming at some point, or at least they're going to tease him once again. And in regards to everything else that is teased in this episode, mainly to do with Zoom and Godspeed, but specifically Zoom because Eric just admitted that Zoom is his favorite villain and he is determined to get him back. And he says that the newspaper article is a doorway to get him back. And I don't know in what way he's going back, but like he said, this is in the Steel Force, so it's going to be a bit twisted from what we saw in that newspaper article. Doesn't necessarily mean that Godspeed is going to be back with Zoom, because that was just the past, future, and present all blended into one. And so some sort of variation of that could potentially happen, maybe later in the season, and Zoom definitely is going to come back at some point. And so let's move on. We have another question, which starts like this. When we talked last time, we talked about how episode 15 would tease Nora's romantic life outside of what we see on the show, and you guys definitely honored that by mentioning her wife. In your mind, without revealing so, do you know who that woman is? Eric replies, no, and that's the exciting part. I'm excited as a writer and a storyteller to discover who that is and give that character agency and her romantic and social life. 
I think that's very exciting. In order to do that, you have to remind the audience that this character is gay. She is marrying a woman. Let's make sure everybody knows that. It's getting back to the territory and the character because we love Jessica Parker Kennedy so much. She brings so much to the show. It's wonderful to see her every time that she kind of pops in, especially as a director because I've known her for so many years. It was nice to have her on set as well as her and Grant working so well together, especially during their father-daughter scenes. And he goes on to say that it was a great challenge. So there you go. Eric doesn't know who Nora's partner is going to be in the future, but that is something that he would like to explore if they get the time. Obviously, Nora's coming back this season. I don't think they're going to directly address that straight away. However, that is something for the future. Okay, so there is a couple more questions, but we're going to skip through to the last question of the interview because it's quite a big interview and maybe we'll go over the other questions in another video but the last question is this you mentioned that you're going to have a conversation with a supergirl alum who hasn't been on the flash how did said meeting go is that something we look forward to in season nine so eric replies the meeting went wonderfully absolutely wonderfully during the course of the meeting i figured out how now to get them into the show because it's our time and I'm putting together my document for season 9. The question was, how would this particular Supergirl character fit into a particular story for one of our Flash regulars? It's very important that they mesh and that the storyline speaks to both characters. I'm happy to report that mystery and that problem has been solved. I don't know if we can work out the schedule wise now, but for me creatively the biggest hurdle has now been leaped over. And this particular person was like, oh, this sounds fantastic, let's do this. I said, okay, I'll get back to you, I'll call you in four months. So, fingers crossed, I don't like to promise things that aren't definitive because a lot of things can happen. This performer could be on another TV show or in a movie or on Broadway or wherever. I have no idea. Our episode order for season nine is still not locked in. Even I, as I'm planning for season nine, have a little leeway in it because I might get more episodes than I think I'm getting, or I might get less. I have to kind of juggle all of these balls, but I am now very cautiously optimistic that the conversation I referred to can happen. We definitely had a big step forward on that, so stay tuned. So that is very exciting. Who is this Supergirl alum? Well, we're not sure as of right now. In the past, we speculated that this could be Nicole Maines, aka she plays Nia now in Supergirl, obviously in the past. She is still, you know, very much so connected to the character. She's in the comics, Nia. I think Nicole would totally be down to come back. However, there is another person, and this person has been in the show before, but apparently Kyla Lee was in Vancouver for a business meeting recently. So, you know, that's always the chance that she could show up as well as this other Supergirl character. But I think the person that Eric Wallace is actually talking about isn't Alex, because Alex appeared recently, and I think that would be way too misleading to refer to this person as never shown up and so in this meeting it seems they discuss exactly how the character would kind of tie in with one of the flash regulars so they're not just going to like pop up for like a random cameo but they're actually going to tie into a particular story so could that mean an actual like prolonged appearance like in multiple episodes linking to a story that personally would be very very exciting and i can't wait to see who this person is and if it comes to fruition and so eric wallace is going to call that person again in like four months when they kind of pick up and start production for season nine because if you guys didn't know we're going to make a video on this hopefully tomorrow Season 9 isn't going to be coming until 2023, but it is coming. It's going to be like releasing in January or something. So stay tuned for that. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to the Flash Podcast. Go check out their links in the description below. They did a great job with this interview. And if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys later goodbye i see red